Next on the Pray in Jesus Name show, Dr. Chaps will pray about these important issues. Churches and families are in a mass exodus from the Boy Scouts after they vote for homosexuality. The Girl Scouts join forces with Planned Parenthood to promote abortion. DOJ warns Christians you cannot remain silent about homosexuality, and the Illinois House tables a vote on gay marriage. Former Navy Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt took a stand to defend religious freedom by daring to pray publicly in Jesus' name. Now he helps you by reporting the news, discerning the spirits, and praying the scriptures. Would you pray with us? Here's Dr. Chaps. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Chaplain Gordon James Klingenschmidt. Dr. Chaps on the air with the Pray in Jesus' Name show, the fastest half hour in Christian television, because we do three things. We report the news, we discern the spirits, and we pray the scriptures in Jesus' name. Are you ready to pray the news with us? Here's our first story. ABC News reports that churches and Christians are now fleeing the pro-homosexual Boy Scouts. A number of churches that previously sponsored Boy Scout troops have said they plan to sever ties to the organization following its decision to lift a longtime national ban on admitting openly gay scouts. Openly homosexual Boy Scouts will still be barred from leadership roles in the organization after they turn 18, but they just voted to allow them to finish their Eagle Scout badge if they're less than 18. They interviewed Christian Eagle Scouts, ABC did, Uh, including Bill Bright, who is now mailing back his Eagle Scout badge in protest, which he earned 46 years ago. Many pastors and conservative churches are stopping their sponsorship of the Boy Scouts, including now the Southern Baptist Association. Frank Page, president of the Southern Baptist Convention's executive committee said, I think I can say with pretty strong accuracy that the vast majority of Southern Baptists are very disappointed in the latest change in policy deeply disappointed. Page said that the convention, which is the largest Protestant denomination in the United States, would be holding its national meeting in about two weeks, after which they would probably recommend that all 47,000 U.S. churches pull out of the Boy Scouts of America. From there, it'll be up to every individual church to decide what they want to do, said Page. About 70% of all Boy Scout troops are supported by religious groups, according to the Boy Scouts of America. And the Southern Baptist Convention currently sponsors hundreds of troops, probably thousands. Also the Mormon Church, which sponsors most of the troops, has now, sadly, endorsed allowing homosexual scouts. And there are even some ex-Mormon Boy Scouts who are marching in uniform at the Gay Pride Parade in Utah this week. That was against Boy Scout policy, but they did it anyway. The Roman Catholic Church has no official position, and the George Soros-funded leftist anti-Christian group, Change.org, delivered 1.8 million petitions to homosexualize the Scouts. Other groups like the National Jewish Committee on Scouting and the pro-homosexual churches, like the Episcopal Church, United Church of Christ, and the Unitarian Universalist Association, all, of course, urged full repeal of the ban. The secret ballot result claimed that 61% of the 1900 total votes were pro-homosexual. Now I'd be surprised if that's actually true. I think there might've been some fraud there. But according to the national recent ABC News Washington Post survey, 63% of Americans favor admitting gay scouts. NBC News also confirms that many Christians are now quitting the Boy Scouts. The father of a Cub Scout uh, sat his son in his lap last week and told reporters that this tore up their hearts. The family is now leaving the Boy Scouts. Aaron Butler, the leader of his eight-year-old son, Evan's Cub Scout Wolf Den in Rousseau, Minnesota, said it was a big disappointment. My son cried for about 10 minutes because I told him that the Boy Scouts were not honoring their own law. He referred to the Boy Scout oath that is interpreted by many as barring gay people. It says, on my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and to my country and obey the Scout law and to help others at all times to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. 
If the Boy Scouts cannot honor their own law, he said, how can I stay in an organization that just does not care anymore? It was between a vote between honoring God and not honoring God. And sadly, not honoring God got more votes. So that is the report from ABC and NBC News. Let's take a moment and discern the spirits. Uh, I wanna, first of all, full disclosure, I've never been in scouting, I was not a Boy Scout, but one of my groomsmen uh, in, at the Air Force Academy where I graduated was an Eagle Scout. And I talked to him this week and he said, I'm pulling my kids out. You know, I, I take them to church, I, I wanted them in scouting, I had, he, he's a, a Cub Scout leader himself, He's my age, 45 years old, his two sons are in scouts, not anymore. He's about to pull out because he said, we're looking for a moral organization that will teach our kids the truth. That it will teach our kids our religion. And Boy Scouts for 100 years have been a religious Christian organization, but not anymore, sadly. Now, I also wanna encourage you to visit youngminutemen Dot com. Youngminutemen.com is a new organization started by my friend, Tom Hofling, uh, who is now gonna compete with the Boy Scouts. Youngminutemen.com, just remember, there are other organizations, Royal Rangers, Awana, there are Christian organizations that will, I believe, are gonna be inspired by the Holy Spirit to promote a new competitive. For all you people who are exodus from the Boy Scouts, you have options out there, raise your children in the faith. Let's pray about this. Here's a scripture that I wanna pray from 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 17. Father in heaven, we pray according to your scriptures and we obey your command to come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and you, God, will receive us. Father, we renounce our sins. We renounce affiliation with organizations that would promote our uh, abuse towards our children. Father, we pray that our kids would be safe and protected and raised in the faith in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, the Girl Scouts are promoting abortion. Introducing FactsCongress.com. Do you care about politics, defending pro-life causes, traditional marriage, and religious freedom? At FactsCongress.com, you can create any petition to Congress, and we will convert your e-petition instantly to a real fax paper on your congressman's desk. And the best part? It's free. Once your voice heard by multiple congressmen at FactsCongress.com, we can blast your petition to all 535 congressmen and senators instantly. And you don't even need a fax machine. Not only do we deliver your petitions instantly, but with our dashboard feature, you can quickly recruit friends on Facebook and Twitter to co-sign your petition. Do you care about a particular cause? You can build a virtual army of supporters at FactsCongress.com. Do you lead a church, faith-based organization, or PAC? We can even help you do fundraising. It's free. Just visit FactsCongress.com and try it out. Make a difference. Sign any petition today at FactsCongress.com. FactsCongress.com. God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps. I want to encourage you to visit FactsCongress.com, one of our affiliate organizations, and they are uh, sponsoring, in fact, the number one petition I saw there was to defend traditional marriage between one man and one woman. You can sign that free petition and fax your congressman today. Our next story comes from lifenews.com who reports the Girl Scouts have now joined Planned Parenthood at a huge pro-abortion conference. In May of 2013, the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts, which is the global arm of Girl Scouts USA, participated in Women Deliver, a global conference for the purpose of calling to action to improve the health and well-being of girls and women. The conference featured speakers such as the late-term abortionist Leroy Carhart, philosopher Peter Singer, who supports infanticide and euthanasia, and Health and Human Services Secretary Kathleen Sebelius. Some of the breakout sessions were entitled Outing and Addressing Abortion Stigma and why I perform abortions. So they're teaching this to Girl Scouts, really? 
Exhibitors included many abortion and population control advocates such as Amnesty International, the Guttmacher Institute, International Planned Parenthood Federation, Marie Stopes International, Planned Parenthood Foundation of America, United Nations Population Fund, and uh, the WAGS organization. Together with global abortion provider Maria Stopes and many other abortion advocates, Girl Scouts USA maintains membership for, in now this other organization, the Coalition for Adolescent Girls. This coalition promotes comprehensive sex education and abortion related care for girls. Well, some people are standing up against this. Here's a young hero, uh, 17 year old, Sydney Volansky, she's the co-founder of this website, speaknowgirlscouts.com. Go to speaknowgirlscouts.com and read about this young woman. She says, I became mad. When I was 14, three years ago, she said, I learned of the World Girl Scout Association, uh, their advocacy for abortion, and I was angry that I had been deceived by an organization that I've mistakenly come to trust. My sister became sad, she says. She felt hurt and betrayed when she realized that Girl Scouts USA is simply not what it says. Instead of remaining neutral on issues like abortion, as they promised, the Girl Scouts fund and hang out with aggressive abortion rights advocates. Given all this, who the Girl Scouts have become is clear to me. Unfortunately, they're certainly not the positive influence on girls that they once were. So that's a quote from lifenews.com, our friend Steve Ertelt, and of course this young hero, Sydney. God bless you, Sydney. Uh, I wanna encourage you uh, to discern the spirits here and see the spirit of murder that is inside some abortion providers, well actually all abortion providers, but the spirit of Molech. And what is the spirit of Molech? In the Old Testament, there was this false god, Molech, who that the people were sacrificing their children to. Child sacrifice is a demonic spirit of murder. And I think that's the same demon now that's inside of Planned Parenthood, inside of the Girl Scouts organization, inside of these people who wanna fund abortion, not just with our tax dollars, but with your Girl Scout cookies. You know, I, I love Girl Scout cookies. I love young uh, girls who go out in there and try to do good, try to, make something good of themselves, try to grow and, and educate themselves, but they need to leave the Girl Scouts who are pro-abortion and join, for example, uh, the American Heritage Girls or some of these other Christian organizations, church-based organizations who don't fund abortion with your Girl Scout cookies. Here's a scripture that I wanna pray with you. Let's pray together from Leviticus 18 and verse 21. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name that we will be faithful to your command, that we will not give any of our children to be sacrificed to Molech. Stop the child's sacrifice, that demonic spirit that is now inside of the abortion industry. For we will not profane your name, almighty God, the name of the Lord. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Let's take a short break. When we come back, uh, the Department of Justice is now saying you can't remain silent on the issue of homosexuality. Thank you for joining us in prayer. Stay tuned for valuable info about partnering with Dr. Chaps. Hi, I'm Chaplain Klingenschmidt. I wanna make available to you a very powerful teaching series that we put together just for you. This four hour DVD has an amazing amount of information and this 90 minute audio version on CD is a condensed version. You can have either one just by visiting our website at PrayInJesusName.org or calling us toll free at 866-Obey-God. In the first hour, we will tell you all about the revival that I saw at the Air Force Academy. In the second hour, we'll teach you about the importance of prayer and fasting and sanctification for this spiritual battle that we're all in. In the third hour, we'll tell you about the ministry of deliverance and even the miracles and exorcism stories that I saw when I was a Navy chaplain. In the fourth hour, we'll tell you about standing up for religious liberty, how I took a stand and faced my own court martial, how we won the victory in Congress, 300,000 petition signers. Please visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org, or call us right now, toll free, at 866-Obey-God. These are important products for you and your church. God bless you in Jesus' name. Stay tuned for the end of our show to learn how to partner with this ministry. Here's Dr. Chaps. 
God bless you in Jesus' name. I'm Dr. Chaps. Let's get right to our next story. My personal friend, Matt Barber from Liberty Council reports an internal Department of Justice document entitled LGBT Inclusion at Work, The Seven Habits of Highly Homosexual Managers. I'm sorry, highly effective managers. This document was emailed to all DOJ managers in advance of the left's so-called Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual, and Transgender Pride Month. The document is chilling. It's riddled with directives that grossly violate prima facie employees' First Amendment liberties. Following are some excerpts from the DOJ Pride Decree. When it comes to homosexual employees, managers are now instructed to follow these seven rules. Number one, do not judge and do not remain silent. Silence will be interpreted as disapproval. So in other words, if you're an employer in the DOJ, you've got to endorse homosexuality publicly. Don't be silent about it, even if you're a Christian. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Now they're saying to Christian leaders, you've got to endorse homosexuality, or guess what? You're not a good manager. You won't be employable in the Department of Justice. Number two, assume that your homosexual employees and their allies are listening to what you're saying, whether you're in a meeting or around the proverbial water cooler. So beware, because those listening ears are everywhere around you. Do attend homosexual events sponsored by DOJ Pride, but don't require that others join you. Well, guess what? You're requiring now that the leadership must attend these things. Well, that's hypocritical. Number four, do display a symbol in your office like a pride sticker or, a bro- or even this brochure indicating that's a homosexual workspace, really? Number five, do use inclusive words. They're censoring your language now, listen to this. Use words like partner or significant other or spouse, but don't use words like husband or wife in the workplace. Are you kidding me? <laughs> they really wanna censor managers from saying words like husband or wife are now illegal speech. Number six, do use a transgender person's chosen name and pronoun that is consistent with his self-identified gender. So if a woman comes to work dressed as a man or a man comes to work dressed as a woman, you've got to call him a her or else you're not being sensitive. Number seven, do deal with offensive jokes and comments forcefully and swiftly when you have evidence that they've occurred in the workplace. In other words, you've got to censor the speech. Now listen, we should never make fun of each other in the workplace, but they say, and comments. In other words, if you're a Christian and you're saying a comment against homosexuality, that must be dealt with forcefully. Go and punish those Christians that they talk against homosexuality. Here's a quote from one of the transgendered instructors in this uh, brochure, it was given this example. Just imagine if people were constantly debating your bathroom privileges. Imagine how humiliating that would be. So if you're a man dressed as a woman, you wanna go into, uh, you're a man, you wanna go into the ladies' room and the ladies say, hey, what are you doing? Don't come in here. Well, that's humiliating to the guy? Are you serious? Kick him out. Good grief. Uh, That's the brochure now being promoted by your Obama administration, your Department of Justice, thanks to Eric Holder and all of the pro-homosexual people who are now censoring and punishing the Christian rights and thanks to Matt Barber for that report. Let's discern the spirits here. I say there's a demonic spirit inside of these, not just the, the cross-dressers, but inside of the entire LBGT movement. And why is that a demonic spirit? Because it disagrees with the Bible. The Holy Spirit would write this. In Deuteronomy 22 and verse five, the Bible says this, a woman shall not wear a man's clothing, nor shall a man put on a woman's clothing. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord your God. The Holy Spirit is discerning the evil spirit inside of the people who do that and even approve of that sort of thing. That's an abomination to Almighty God. And if you're a Christian in the workplace, especially in DOJ, stand up for your freedom of religion to believe the word of God. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus' name 
that you will liberate us from the tyranny. Don't, don't censor all the Christians out of the Department of Justice. Don't pressure government employees who happen to have a Christian perspective from, and don't force us to not remain silent. Don't, don't force us to endorse homosexuality. Father, protect the Christian people in government from this wicked censorship that is being enforced upon them by the Department of Justice. Father, we pray against that spirit of tyranny in Jesus' name, amen. When we come back, the Illinois legislature has tabled a vote on gay marriage. Hi, this is Chaplain Klingenschmidt. I wanna thank you for participating and watching this important message today about defending religious liberty. If there's anything our message proves is that we can make a difference. If we will rise up together as the Church of Jesus Christ, we do not need to be ashamed of the name of Jesus. I need you to participate today in one of four ways. Please visit our website at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org and sign our free petitions to defend religious liberty. Number two, I need you to call us at 866-Obey-God and we, you can sign what they call a fax petition. You don't have to know how to operate a fax machine, but for a nominal fee, we will fax your petition to all 100 senators or all 535 congressmen to defend the right to pray in Jesus' name. Number three, please purchase our DVDs and CDs with important teachings about defending religious liberty around the country. And number four, please donate. These rallies cost us thousands of dollars and we need your donations to stay on the air. Please call us today at 866-Obey-God and do what you can to help. God bless you in Jesus' name, I'm Dr. Chaps. Our last story today comes from the organization Americans for Truth About Homosexuality. And it was reported by my personal friend, Peter LaBarbera, good Christian activist in Illinois, who reports a victory for traditional marriage. And what is a stunning setback to the homosexual lobby in Illinois, the openly homosexual representative, Greg Harris, Democrat from Chicago, announced on the last day of the legislative session that he did not have the votes to call SB 10, the homosexual marriage bill to the floor of the Illinois House. Harris and his high powered liberal allies were not able to peel off enough Chicago Democrats or wavering Republicans in the General Assembly that had a veto proof Democrat supermajority in both houses to pass the bill, but they still failed. A strong grassroots coalition of black, white, and Latino Christians across the state formed the backbone of the opposition. We must realize, however, this is only a temporary win. Now homosexual activists will redouble their efforts to homosexualize marriage in our state. So we must redouble our efforts to stop them. Also, immediately after the defeat, the powerful homosexual lawyers from the group Lambda Legal began touting a new lawsuit that they're gonna bring before open, openly lesbian judge Sophia Hall. And they have another avenue toward legalizing homosexual based marriage in Illinois. The self-styled queer activist filled with pride and considerable arrogance believe they are entitled to homosexual marriage as a supposed constitutional civil right, but they are wrong. And yes, Judge Hall the lesbian judge should recuse herself from hearing this case due to her obvious conflict of interest. This hard won legislative victory in the house after a string of marriage defeats in other states will encourage and energize pro-family advocates across the nation because it still shows, despite the less frequent boasts of uh, homosexual based marriage is inevitable, it's really not inevitable not even in Democrat dominated Illinois and Chicago. The Chicago Tribune said about 600 people had signed a petition. Homosexuals now are petitioning to on the George Foros website, uh, change.org, that they want to deny entry of Illinois politicians in the 44th annual Chicago Homosexual Pride Parade. And that's the news from Peter LaBarbera. Now, isn't this interesting that the homosexuals are uh, advocating to stop 
legislators from marching in the gay pride parade. I agree with that position. I think we ought to sign that petition. As Christians, we ought to stop all the legislators from marching in the homosexual pride parade. The people on the left want to keep them out because they didn't vote the right way. The people on the right want to keep them out, obviously, because the government shouldn't be marching in honor of homosexuality. I think that we finally found something we all agree on. Keep the legislators out of the gay rights movement. Well, here's a scripture from Isaiah chapter three and verse nine. The Bible says this, the look on their faces testifies against them. They parade their sin like Sodom. They no longer hide their sin. Woe to them. They have brought destruction and disaster upon themselves. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, we pray in Jesus name that you will end the spirit of sodomy, which is parading itself in the streets Father, stop the government from endorsing this. Father, we pray against the sin of pride. And we command you, spirit of pride, to come out of these people. Spirit of lust, come out of these people. Father, forgive their sins and redeem them in Jesus' name. Let a wave of Christian revival fall upon Chicago and Illinois and bless them with this liberty, true liberty, which comes in Jesus Christ. Amen. All right, we're gonna talk about tomorrow's show. Here's a quick preview of tomorrow's show. Department of Justice warns you not to tweet against Islam. Turkey is now funding a $100 million mosque in Maryland. Muslims are now promoting female genital mutilation here in America. And Pakistan elects a strict Muslim. And is he gonna persecute Christians? Well, these are stories that we're following and we're concerned about. Uh, Today was obviously the story about the homosexual agenda. Tomorrow is gonna be a story about the Muslim agenda and how those are affecting America and preventing your religious freedom. We defend religious freedom here at this show. And I encourage you to visit our website, PrayInJesusName.org. Sign up for our free email alerts and sign our petitions to defend that at PrayInJesusName.org. God bless you, we'll see you next time. Chaplain Klingenschmidt is a graduate of the U.S. Air Force Academy who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Regent University. As a former Navy chaplain, by taking a public stand for freedom of speech and religious expression, and by sacrificing his own 16-year career and million-dollar pension, he was vindicated by the U.S. Congress, who changed the law and restored freedom for military chaplains to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps not only defended the Constitution, but his petitions have helped change the law in 10 states, restoring freedom to pray in Jesus' name. Dr. Chaps needs your financial support to stay on the air. Would you please send your best donation today? Please visit PrayInJesusName.org to donate online. Or you can mail a check to Pray In Jesus Name Ministries, Post Office Box 77077, Colorado Springs, Colorado 80970. You can also call us toll free right now at 866-Obey-God. That's 866-O-B-E-Y-G-O-D. Please sign up for our free emails at PrayInJesusName.org. Again, that's PrayInJesusName.org.